You're listening to The Higher Ed Marketer, a podcast geared towards marketing professionals in higher education. This show will tackle all sorts of questions related to student recruitment, donor relations, marketing trends, new technologies, and so much more. If you're looking for conversations centered around where the industry is going, this podcast is for you. Let's get into the show. Welcome to the Higher Ed Marketer podcast, where each week, Mark Kaler from Kaler Solutions and myself, Troy Singer from Think Patented, interview higher ed marketers that we admire and we feel have something to bring to the higher ed community. And this is a special episode. We are interviewing Courtney Cannon, and she is with Gallaudet University. Courtney reached out to us during our last webinar and asked us if we could provide captioning because she is hearing impaired, which spurred a long conversation because she was thankful we were able to do that around inclusive marketing. And we felt that it was a message that should be brought to the entire community to better understand. Yeah, Troy, it's, it's been a, a great journey with, with Courtney. And I, I, I have to say that because I have not had a lot of experience with the deaf community, and with those who are needing different opportunities like that, I was a little bit intimidated. I'll be honest. I, when, when she first reached out and and needed that, I, I wanted to do that. And we found out how to do that utilizing zoom and a tool called otter. And so we were able to accommodate that. And she was so grateful for that. She said it was the first time she'd ever been to a webinar that someone actually, you know, accommodated that. And so I was very proud of our team of being able to do that. But then afterwards I was following up with her and getting to know her better and, and uh, offering to uh, review some things at Gallaudet. And, you know, I wasn't sure how to, you know, engage whether Zoom was the way to do it or how that worked. It, it, again, I just didn't know. And so it's been such a great journey to be able to get to know Courtney, to be able to have some frank, honest conversations. And, and this is such a great podcast because, I mean, we did our pre-interview and we did it through Zoom. And Zoom is a tool that she uses every day, just like the rest of us but she uses it in a way of being able to read the lips of the people that she's zooming with. Yeah. And uh, we have, we have also accommodated with the fact of having not only when we have the conversations with Courtney, I turn the live captioning on. So at least there's some captioning going on while she can read our lips. And so that's been great. And so it's, it's been good to learn about a lot of things. She's really opened my eyes to a lot of things that I did not understand. And so we are taking efforts to take this podcast and turn it into a YouTube video that you can watch it. And so if you have a need for American Sign Language, Courtney does respond in ASL and everything that she uh, talks through. But we're also going to make sure that we caption everything that Courtney says. It's going to be a really good conversation. So I'm just so, so pleased and excited to be able to bring this conversation to everyone. Thank you, Barton. Well said. Now we bring you Courtney Cannon. It is my pleasure to welcome Courtney Cannon, She is the undergraduate enrollment and youth programs marketing strategist for Gallaudet University to the Higher Ed Marketer podcast. How are you doing this afternoon, Courtney? Thank you for having me here. I'm doing great. Happy October. Well, we appreciate you being a part of our show. To get things started, I would love to let everyone know how we became friends and how we came up for the topic of the podcast. Courtney reached out when we had our last webinar and wanted to know if we could have captioning. And it was the first time that we've had that question. And Bart did everything he could to make sure that we had it. And in the follow-up conversations, and as Courtney expressed appreciation, it became very apparent that that's something that a lot of webinars don't have. And we wanted to go into the conversation of inclusiveness in marketing. So Bart would love to, for you to, from your perspective, kind of go into how we further connected with Courtney. Yes. Thank you, Troy. This has been a great conversation that we've started. We did a pre-interview conversation with Courtney a couple of weeks ago. And one of the things that I wanted to talk with Courtney about, especially was just the idea of you know, being more sensitive and inclusive in in the way that we do our marketing. Even in our brief conversation earlier, I learned a lot about the importance of even in Zoom, leveraging kind of a a plain background to make it easier for Courtney to be able to read my lips 
and being able to to do those types of things. And so I thought it would be great to just understand a little bit more from Courtney's point of view about inclusive marketing. And so Courtney, I'm curious, you know, your experience, not only of, of you know, being able to receive the, that inclusiveness, but also as a marketer, how do you try to be more inclusive in the marketing that you're doing? That's a great question. I think it's important to include everyone that is trying to market something. Because for example, nobody can learn more about how education marketing. So I saw a webinar that I wanted last week that I wanted to join and learn more. So I emailed them, like, I gave a teacher to act. And they would be captured. They emailed me back if they would try cut her back to the reputation page to sign up for the webinar. And I saw at the very bottom that it will be captured. Cut if I saw that in the first place. And the monthly post, whatever, however, what they're having, they're able to have to navigate through all that trouble to try to pick it out and people be accommodated for me. Um, I think people are people. They don't have time to try to pick it out and people are happy or not. So it's important to show that it will happen to be inclusive. That's great. I, I like the idea that it, it's it's a little bit on the part of the marketer to make sure that they can show that they are inclusive. I like the idea that you said that, you know, showing that somewhere in it, not, not as a, not as a postscript or an asterisk at the bottom of the page, but something to say, this is a, a higher ed marketing webinar for everyone, comma, we are going to be including captioning for those who will need that, you know, and then tell about the, the, the story. I love that idea because I think that's a very small thing that could be done to really make it more inclusive for a lot of other folks. What are some of the things that you do at Gallaudet that help people feel more inclusive, whether it be from the deaf students that you serve or even from other areas th- throughout the uh, university marketing? Delicate University, student population, much need that but it includes his student so Those his students study to become Sadly, with the chapter who are adapted to teach with the adapter, our marketing effort. We have video and sadly, it was but English caption. Like two weeks, we are bad, Nicholas University. So we make sure we keep that sadly, it was in English caption. So, but the gap. And we try to make sure our video, picture, letter, PowerPoint are accommodated to the deaf plant. We have a contact at Gallaudet that works with the deaf plant. So we go to her for educating us how to best serve the deaf plant. So we achieve the social media cut. If they have a picture or a video, we, we make sure that it's written below. So video, picture, everything written out to caption in the world. If that makes sense. Yes, that does. Actually, that's that's very good. And I have read a lot of um, statistics lately that even videos that are utilized on on LinkedIn for those who can hear they're still wanting captions because sometimes it's not appropriate to have the audio on. And so I think that captioning not only can be more of an inclusive way to do marketing, but it's just, it's becoming a marketing technique that really needs to be done everywhere. Hey, the part has a pretty to know the right way to capture. You don't want, you want to make sure that the capture should be now the piece and not copy the piece. Because the deaf culture values this to this expression, and that's a huge part of the same with the deaf culture. So, I'm making sure that the colors of the capsule is able to see it. 
But then, which is a very young, sometimes has the cups and cover at the hand. So you can't see the sound but the cups. Would, we just have to make sure that the cups wouldn't approach it. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Troy? Also in the earlier conversation, Courtney, you expressed the importance that within the deaf community that there is a bilingual, being bilingual, and I had not heard or understood the concept until you explained it, that it's important for one to not only be able to read lips, but also be able to sign. But it's also surprising that there are a lot of deaf people who aren't proficient at one or the other and wanted to know if you could kind of explain the concept and the importance of bilingual proficiency within the deaf community. I wanted to clear that something. Bilingual means sign in English. Not meaning that. So sign language is the primary communication with the deaf community that they use to communicate and act a decision with the deaf community. English is a pretty to know because in the real world, everything is in English. Have the key song, people work, or people do my job, email, back and forth. Ah, that is in English. Cut. That's a pretty to the deaf community because Shani Christ has its own grammar, has its own structure. It's like Spanish. They have their own grammar, same thing with Shani So it's important for them to have both structure. Why the really at the real world at the Shani Christ with the deaf community too? Be part of that question. Thank you. That's very helpful to understand that better. And we really appreciate that. What would you say as far as how can traditional higher ed, I mean, certainly Gallaudet serves a very specific community. How can the rest of higher ed, because I, I, if I recall correctly, the college you attended was not Gallaudet. It was, I think it was Villanova. You know, there were ways that you needed to be able to be accommodated not only through the inclusiveness in the marketing, but also just the inclusiveness on campus. So as higher ed marketers, what can we do to better serve our audiences to be more inclusive? That's a great question. Look at that, at the own aspect. But maybe so. It depends on the population that they serve, three video, three picture, maybe it is, but different members of the college community. I think that to me, Kelly, is a pretty to hear from someone at that college from a specific population, maybe a branch person. Hear this to me, someone in the country, how they get around. That's what we do a lot at college at university. We try to do a lot of three Kelly. Because there's so many different depth backgrounds. Some are hurricane, don't know how to sign. Some are deaf, but they only link with the sign, link with they don't know how to read that. And then we have some in between. Mm-hmm. So we try to use the live story telling from each of the spectrum. That's great. Thank you. And that's just a reminder, too, that Troy, I'm thinking about is the storytelling is such a big part of this. And I love the fact that Courtney has talked and encouraged us to do more storytelling through various means, whether it's video, pictures, other things that can be leveraged. But that reminds me of the conversation we had with Jim Small a couple of weeks ago from Notre Dame University that he talked about the importance of storytelling. So if you haven't heard that episode, be sure to go back and listen to that as well. Thank you, Bart. Courtney, as we bring it to a close, would like to know if there are any other aspects of inclusive marketing that marketers should keep in mind as they are preparing their marketing communication. How much more time do we have? <laughs> <laughs> um, as long as you need. <laughs> um, I think maybe the most effective way to 
This is where the pretty self of these shoes can see how I'm a good being to be seen that little me should maybe like a flat person how would they receive the indignation? How to make it to them? Like the different disability, different background. Maybe try to put the sound that they seem to have capability, capacity, pick out the best strategy. And others are maybe have a close decision but a person from that community. Like the same either, but me. You have a cult disease, but you need to learn more, better understand the community and how to eat them. Thank you. Thank you very much. We really appreciate you being a guest on the Higher Ed Marketer podcast. Thanks for having me. It's a honor to be here. It is our pleasure. Bart, do you have any parting words? Yeah, a couple of things that I wanted to point out, and I know that that Courtney just kind of made a a very good case for empathetic marketing. Mm -hmm. We talk about some of the best marketing is always going to be from a a standpoint of being empathetic to our audience. And whether that is uh, what Courtney kind of pointed out is getting in the shoes of different communities, whether they are, uh, you know, deaf community, whether it's a blind community, whether it's a disability community, or even if it's other communities like first generation college students or, or you know, students of Latino and background where maybe their parents don't speak uh, English, but they speak Spanish, really understanding how can we best accommodate, how can we best communicate, and how can we best market to these different audiences with these different um, ways. I mean, we're not all the same, and that's what makes the diversity of a university community so exciting is that we're not the same. And I think as marketers, it's our responsibility to understand that, to be empathetic, and then make sure that we do things that are not creating friction for those people who need it. So like Courtney said at the beginning, if we're going to make a webinar a captions available, let's put that up front so that she's not wasting an hour of her time trying to figure that out. And so I think that just, again, it goes back to empathy. It goes back to understanding and being willing to learn about everybody else. And I think that's really the key. And Courtney, thank you so much for spending time with us today. No problem. Courtney, we hope you don't mind if you have had fans that have been developed during this podcast, if we share your contact information, maybe can people reach out to you on LinkedIn? Yeah, that's fine. No problem. Very good. Well, again, that brings us to the end of another episode. The Higher Ed Marketer podcast is sponsored by Kaler Solutions, a creative and strategy higher ed agency in Indianapolis, Indiana, and by Think Patented, a marketing execution company that is located in Dayton, Ohio. On behalf of Bart Kaler and myself, Troy Singer, thank you very much for joining us today. You've been listening to The Higher Ed Marketer. To ensure that you never miss an episode, subscribe to the show in your favorite podcast player. If you're listening with Apple Podcasts, we'd love for you to leave a quick rating of the show. Simply tap the number of stars you think the podcast deserves. Until next time.